So one question that I get a lot is, even though I don't have Photoshop at home, how can I continue to create digital art? Uh, so I created this document um, and it says digital art web apps. If you don't have access to Photoshop at home, no worries, you can still create digital art. Click on one of the three links below to create your own digital art. And so here I have three links, Pixlr, SumoWare, and Photoshop. And just be aware when you go to photoshop.com, this is going to be a more limited version. This website does not have all the same options and functions as the desktop version that you guys are used to, okay? Um, and before you click on these links, if I was you, what I would do is I would watch this presentation. So it says, please note the links in the below presentation may not be up to date. That is why I posted them separate above. However, the detailed descriptions are accurate. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this. And what I would like to do you guys to do at home is to click on this as well every time you want to start to make your own artwork. So I click once and it takes me to the presentation. And it says here for the best view to click present. And now it says welcome using Photoshop editing apps to enhance and streamline your instruction. So here I have the table of contents and what you want to do is you want to quickly navigate to a certain slide you can just simply click on it. So maybe uh, today you want to work with Pixlr so you click there and it takes you straight to it, Photoshop or SumoWare. Uh, if you want to go through each one then you can just simply press the forward button on your keyboard. All right. So the first one that I'm going to do is Pixlr and it says the following slides provide you with three different Pixlr web apps. Click on the image to launch that web page. So these are the three different ones. So one is Editor, one is Express, and one is Pixlr Omatic. And this one's very similar to if you're comfortable with uh, using Instagram, this is very similar to that. It just does these really, really quick um, like overlays and borders that you're used to. So that's a fun one to work with. All right. So I'm going to move forward one more slide and it says Pixlr Editor. This is a sophisticated image editing tool for both pros and talented amateurs. Graphic designers and photo retouchers use this app as do educators to teach their students the principles of graphic design. So you don't need an account. You don't need anything special to install. And this is the part that's really great is that it allows you to create individual layers. As you guys know, that's super important the lasso tool, brush controls, cloning, and filters. So you'll notice that a lot of the tool options available in Photoshop are also going to be available in Pixlr. And if you look at the tool option bar over here, this looks very similar to what you see in Photoshop. The other thing that's neat is you guys can store your images to a library. Uh, that's a little bit more sophisticated. You have to go to your drive and then you install where it says more apps. Those steps are listed in this presentation. I'm not going to get into that today. You can also connect photos from anywhere else and bring them in. So you're going to notice that some of the web apps, they only allow you to do a file new and paint, whereas Pixlr allows you to actually do a file new and paint a blank document, which is great. And it also allows you to take an image in and then adjust that image how you would like, which is also great. So this one's really similar to Photoshop. Pixlr Express is just like in the title. It's quicker um, and it, ha it has less options than editor. <clears throat> so this one also allows you to do different effects, which is really fun. Add stickers, um, sparkles, things like that. So if that's something that you would like to do, this is more like Photoshop when you would add a filter to your image or like I was talking about earlier, like some of those Instagram filters, this would give you um, the option to achieve that. And then Pixel Aromatic is really cool. Um, what I like about it is, so here it says vintage, grunge, neon, chemical burns. Those are all different effects that you can apply on top of your photograph. And by doing that, it, um, it really acts like you're changing the photograph, um, like <clears throat> you're putting it through or washing it through chemicals, like what people used to do when they uh, developed photos or still do if they're choosing to develop photos using chemicals. All right. Um, so this is really fun. Uh, it's simple to do. It's relaxing to do. It's not frustrating. So if that's something that you would want to do uh, to just kind of sit back and relax, Pixlr-O-Matic 
and Pixlr Express are the ones for you. If you really kind of want to focus on something and work hard, uh, editor is what you would want to do. Okay, so let's say you, uh, it says, please note to get started in Photoshop.com, you have to upload a photo to get started. Uh, so you cannot do a file new and make a new thing. It only allows you to edit photos. However, if you want to draw only and or use an image um, in Photoshop, I'm sorry, photo, then you can go to Sumoware. So that's how Photoshop.com is a little bit more limited than Sumoware. And by clicking on these things, they will take you to where you want to go. I'm going to go forward. So like I said, if you choose to work with the Photoshop web app, it's called Photoshop Express Editor. Again, this is free. It's limited. It is not going to be like what you're used to in my classroom. Um, and that's okay. So when you go to it, just think about what it is that you would like to create. So it says it gives you an easy option for quick fixes and creative enhancements. And then if you want to do that one, you click there and it takes you to it. Again, you will need, um, as soon as you launch, you will be asked to upload a photo. So you cannot do a blank document. Um, so you need to make sure that you upload a photo. And once you've uploaded that, then you're able to edit and enhance that photo to better suit your needs. So again, in order to upload the photo, you would have to follow all of the prompts. So this is an image that I ended up making. I used colored pencils to draw it. And I uploaded it into uh, Photoshop. And you'll notice over here, this is a larger version of what this is. So these are all the different things that you can do in Photoshop. Some of you have already used the crop tool. What that does is it allows you to cut off some images, part of the image that you might not want to see. So for instance, if I took a photograph of this drawing on top of a table, and I don't want people to see the table, I would use the crop tool to crop it out. Um, so these are all the different things that you can do to change or enhance your image. Then you could add bubbles, stickers, um, so this is it larger. You could add a frame going around the outside. You could add text, write something on top of your image. And then this is just kind of, again, a comparison. So it lets you know that Sumoware allows you to start with a blank file, and then you can add images. You can use the type tool and or create your own digital art. And remember, when you use Photoshop, you have to upload a photo to start. So this is what Sumoware looks like, and you'll notice that Sumoware is very similar to Photoshop as well. Um, it has a zoom in, zoom out feature here. This is your color picker. It's always open. Um, right in Photoshop, you would have to click here to see that color picker window. These are different swatches where you can just click to do a quick selection of a color. And then you'll notice this image was built on a bunch of different layers and you can change the opacity of the layers and the layers mode, which we've talked a lot about. And don't forget to change the order of your layers. Remember, what is ever on top is in front. And yes, it looks like the waves is behind, but that's because they changed the mode to multiply and put the opacity down to 10%. Naming your layers will also help you. And then over here, you have all your tools and then your menu bar, which you're used to. And then don't forget, this is your tools option bar. So, oh my gosh, look at in this gradient area, how many more gradients they have where Photoshop only had, I think, four or five options. Again, this is the layers mode, so you can play around with that. And then this is the opacity to that particular tool. So for the gradient tool, it would come up at a lower opacity of 25. If you want to create your own digital art, you will go to File, New Image. So you'll see here I clicked on File and then New Image. Do not do these keyboard shortcuts. Control N will just create a new window in the internet. Okay, these default to internet. Okay, so don't use keyboard shortcuts for anything. Control T, don't do it. All right, that's new tab. Uh, so once you create your new image, then you get to create, I'm sorry, once you click to create your new image, then you can begin to create. If you want to work on an image, it says go to file open from my computer and then you can create something from your own computer. Oops. You could also go um, and open from a URL so you could get an image off the internet. Once you've uploaded your photo, you will then be able to edit and enhance your photo to better suit your needs. 
So this is what I was talking about before. If you're interested in um, going to the drive, you can connect more apps. You can connect more apps into the drive. And one of the apps that you could connect is Pixlr Editor. And so you would search and then press connect. These are also another link to a bunch of different images that you can go and check on. Um, so by clicking on here, it takes you to a link to some other tools. Photoshop tutorials. Uh, this also will take you to a link so that you can do a lot of different Photoshop tutorials. So that's another thing that you can click on and try. Again, this is just to kind of make you guys aware. This is what we're used to working with, which is Photoshop. This is Sumoware. And this is Pixlr. All of these have the different tool option bars, the windows, and everything that you've been used to throughout the classroom, the time in the classroom, okay? So you guys can continue to remember what you learned in Photoshop and then apply it to these different web apps. And lastly, you can go to Google um, and search for anything these days. So if you want to better work on Sumoware and you want to make, let's say, a robot, you could go and type in uh, how to use Sumoware to create a robot, how to use Pixlr to create um, a watercolor design. Um, the creativity is really limitless. I will um, post some projects sometime uh, this week or next week if you guys want to work on them. But just because I'm not posting projects doesn't mean you don't need to be productive. So you can continue to create by using the internet, the skills you've already learned. Um, YouTube is a great resource. If there's something that you would like me to show or demonstrate, by all means, please send me an email or note uh, through Google Classroom. And I will see if that's something that I could create a video for you guys on um, in the near future. All right, keep creating.